Throughout history, royals around the globe have used crowns as a symbol of status. Depending on the cultural values and wealth of a community each crown is unique. The wearing of such headgear, has always been a strong symbol of power, and wealth dating back to our earliest records of civilization. Maybe the idea was too simply to make the wearer the tallest in the village or to stand out as the chief. Who knows? Whatever the reason, a crown is a sort after peace and indirectly these have been the cause of quite a few spats over the years. The bigger the headgear the more important you are. Traditionally anyway. Many of the modern day crowns we see in those glamorous portraits are very old and have been changed many times over the years to suit the wearer and the fashion. Crowns and tiaras have been made of anything from vines, clay, leather, cloth, felt and fur as well as the precious metals and gems that we recognize today. Most of these well-known pieces spend much of their life in museums, protected by heavy security. The custodian of these pretties doesn't even get to pop them on from time to time to prance around in front of the mirror. So, let's indulge ourselves with this marvelous crown jewels and their history to humankind. Tenth on our list, is the Corona Ferra. Or in English, the Iron Crown of Lombardy. Made in the 4th century, it is considered to be one of the oldest symbol of Christiandom, forged by mankind. This crown was originally actually a votive object, because it is believed that the metal hoop fixed to the inside of the crown comes from the nails of the cross of Christ. The outer circlet of the crown is made of six segments of beaten gold, partly enameled, joined together by hinges. It is set with 22 gemstones that stand out in relief, in the form of crosses and flowers. The crown was certainly in use for the coronation of the kings of Italy by the 14th century, and presumably since at least the 11th. However, according to a more recent study, the crown in its current state is the result of two different works made between the 4th to 5th and the 9th century. This seems to validate the legends about the origin of the crown, that date it back to the Lombard era and the coronation of their kings. The last to be crowned with the Iron Crown was Emperor Ferdinand I, in his role as King of Lombardy and Venetia. This occurred in Milan, on September 6, 1838. Currently the crown is kept in the Cathedral of Munza, near Milan. Ninth on our list, is the Crown of the Andes. This is the only crown in the list that is not made for mankind, it is far more divine. It was for the Virgin Mary, the Immaculate Conception of Papayan Columbia. It took six years to complete with 25 goldsmith, 5.3 pounds of pure 20 carat gold, and 1,500 carats of vibrant green Colombian emeralds. Finish in 1599 it was only used during special occasions. In 1650 the crown was stolen by the English pirates only to lose it in a street fight three days after. And in 1812 the crown was found and returned to Pope Ian by Libertador Simon Bolivar. Currently, the crown is on display at the New York Metropolitan Museum of Arts. Created through the virtuosity of the Spanish colonial artists. The crown serves as a vivid expression of the cultural values and aspirations of the community within which it was made and used. Eighth on our list, is the crown of St. Wenceslas. Made in 1347. 
It was made for the 11th King of Bohemia and Holy Roman Emperor Charles IV, from the House of Luxembourg. He had it made for his coronation, dedicating it to the first patron saint of the country Street Wenceslas and bequeathed it as a state crown for the coronation of, future, Bohemian kings. The Street Wenceslas crown is made of 21 to 22 carat, 88 to 92 percent, gold and decorated with precious stones and pearls. Unlike many other European royal treasures, the Street Wenceslas crown is not displayed publicly, and only a replica is shown. It is kept in a chamber within St. Vitus Cathedral accessible by a door in the St. Wenceslas Chapel. The jewels are only taken from the chamber and displayed for periods of several days on notable occasions approximately once every five years. The crown was last exhibited in May 2016 to mark the 700th anniversary of the birth of Charles IV. Number 7. The Royal Crown of Nepal. The crown consisted of 730 diamonds, over 2,000 pearls, precious rubies, large carats of emeralds, and other gems. The earliest record of the crown was when it was shown in the portrait of the first king of Nepal, King Prithivi, in 1768. The crown was last used during the coronation of King Jai A. Hendra way back in 2001. And sad to say that, after 239 years of the Shah dynasty, it came to an end on 2008 when King Jai A. Hendra stepped down as monarch, and Nepal was declared as republic and no longer a kingdom. Next on the list, is the Holy Crown of Hungary, also known as the Crown of Saint Stephen. The crown was the coronation crown used by the Kingdom of Hungary for most of its existence since the first century. No King of Hungary was regarded as having been truly legitimate king without being crowned with it. It was first called the Holy Crown in 1256. During the 14th century, royal power came to be represented not simply by a crown, but by just one specific object, the Holy Crown. This also meant that the Kingdom of Hungary was a special state, they were not looking for a crown to inaugurate a king, but rather, they were looking for a king for the crown, as written by Crown Guard Peter of A. He also depicts that the Holy Crown is for the Hungarians what the Lost Ark is for the Jewish people. The last king to be coronated by the crown was King Charles IV, on December 30, 1916. The last Hungarian king was a tragic hero who, searched for peace in a situation in which a victory for his allies would have posed at least as big a threat to the people of the Austro-Hungarian Empire, as a victory for the Entente powers would have done. During the Second World War, the crown was kept in the United States of America and on January 6, 1978 it was returned to the Hungarian people and was placed on the National Museum of Hungary. Currently the crown rests on the Parliament House of Hungary, where it symbolizes the country from ancient times to the present. Fifth on our list is the Empress Crown of Persia. Following in the footsteps of policies initiated under the White Revolution that directed the further emancipation of Iranian women, Mohammad Reza Shah determined to make a symbolic gesture by crowning his consort, Empress Farah, during his own elaborate coronation ceremony in October 1967. Until that date, the wives of Persian monarchs had never been crowned since the Muslim conquest of Iran, so it was therefore necessary to design a new crown for the occasion. The frame of the crown is made of white gold and is lined with a cap of green velvet. The crown contains 36 emeralds, 105 pearls, 34 rubies, 2 spinels, and 1469 diamonds. Empress Farah Pahlavi was the first female monarch to be crowned, in the 2500 years of the Shah dynasty and unfortunately its last. 
fourth on our list is the St. Edward's Crown. It is the centerpiece of the crown jewels of the United Kingdom. Named after St. Edward the Confessor, it has been traditionally used to crown English and British monarchs at their coronations since the 13th century. The original crown was a holy relic kept at Westminster Abbey, Edward's burial place, until the regalia was either sold or melted down when Parliament abolished the monarchy in 1649. During the English Civil War, the present version of St. Edward's crown was made for Charles II in 1661. It is solid gold and is decorated with 444 precious and semi-precious stones. After 1689, it was not used to crown a monarch for over 200 years. In 1911, the tradition was revived by George V, and all subsequent monarchs have been crowned using St. Edward's crown, and the last one who used it, was Queen Elizabeth II, the current monarch of the United Kingdom since 1953. To this day, Queen Elizabeth II has reigned Great Britain for over 68 years, and up to that time she had seen the crown for only three times. And third on our list, is the famous Belavi crown of Persia. It was the traditional coronation crown in the Persian crown jewels which was used during the Pahlavi dynasty, 1925-1979. Following the ascension of the Pahlavi dynasty in 1925, Reza Shah, ordered a group of Iranian jewelers, under the supervision of Hajj Sarajd and Javahari, to create a new crown to replace the Kiani crown, which had been used by the Qajar dynasty. Inspiration for the new design was drawn from paintings and historical references to crowns used during the Sassanid Empire, which had ruled Persia from 224 to 651 AD. The frame of the crown is made of gold, silver and red velvet. A staggering 3,380 diamonds, totaling 1,144 carats, are set into the object. The largest of these is a 60 carat, yellow brilliant which is centrally placed in a sunburst of white diamonds. Found in three rows are 369 nearly identical natural white pearls. The crown also contains five sizable emeralds, totaling 200 carats, the largest of which is approximately 100 carats. This magnificent crown was used for the last time during the coronation of Mohammad Reza Shah Pahlavi on 26 October, 1967. The crown survived the revolution and now it is currently on display with the rest of the Iranian crown jewels at the Central Bank of Iran in Tehran. Second on our list is the Grand Imperial Crown of Russia. The crown was used by the monarchs of Russia from 1762 until the Russian monarchy's abolition in 1917. The Great Imperial Crown was first used in a coronation by Catherine the Great. The beautiful crown reflects Pawsey's skilled workmanship. It is adorned with 4,936 diamonds arranged in splendid patterns across the entire surface of the crown. Bordering the edges of the mitre are a number of fine, large white pearls. The crown is also decorated with one of the seven historic stones of the Russian diamond collection, a large precious red spindle weighing 398.72 carats, 79 grams, which was brought to Russia by Nicholas Spufferi, the Russian envoy to China from 1675 to 1678. It is believed to be the second largest spindle in the world and it was last worn at the coronation of Nicholas II. It was displayed prominently next to Nicholas II, on a cushion at the state opening of the Russian Duma inside the Winter Palace in St. Petersburg in 1906. 
it survived the 1917 revolution and is currently on display in Moscow at the Kremlin Armory's State Diamond Fund. And first on our list is the Imperial State Crown. It is one of the crown jewels of the United Kingdom and symbolizes the sovereignty of the monarchy. It has existed in various forms since the 15th century. The current version was made in 1937 and is worn by the monarch after a coronation and used at the state openings of parliament. Although this is one of the newer items in the regalia, the imperial state crown contains some of the most historic jewels in the collection, which have attracted many legends. For example, the Black Prince's ruby, set into the cross at the front of the crown is actually a bellas or spinel, a semi-precious stone said to be the same stone owned by Pedro the Cruel, King of Castile, before he gave it to Edward, Prince of Wales, known as the Black Prince, in 1367 as a reward for helping him defeat a rival in battle. The Blue Stuart Sapphire this sapphire was reputedly smuggled out of the country by James II when he fled in 1688. It now adorns the back of the imperial state crown. The Cullinan II, a 317.4 carats diamond type II or internally flawless, is the second largest stone in the crown jewel of England, is set into the front band of the imperial state crown. The imperial state crown is the crown that the monarch wears as they leave Westminster Abbey after the coronation. It is also used on formal occasions, most notably the state opening of parliament, 